Hello, welcome to BIS Talks. In this program, we are going to talk about standardization in the field of production and general engineering. Let me start with a question. What would you call a process which produces the same or similar results on repetitive application? If your answer is standardization, then you've hit the bullseye. In the 18th century, with the onset of industrial revolution and the need for high precision machine tools and interchangeable parts, screw threads, rails, lathes, etc. got standardized. In the 19th century, standardization was recognized as a tool to increase productivity and finally in the 20th century, with the onset of mass production, the Government of India established Bureau of Indian Standards, BIS, as the national standards body to formulate standards. For formulation of Indian standards in different sectors of economy, 15 divisional councils were created. The Production and General Engineering Department, PGD, is one of the largest divisional councils established in the year 1947. In Bureau of Indian Standards, production and general engineering discipline is one of the oldest areas of standardization. BIS has formulated more than 2400 standards under this discipline. Among these standards, around 1400 are product standards, 28 are safety standards, and rest of the standards are on test methods and dimensions. Production and general engineering department of BIS has technical committees that formulate standards on products used in every sector of science and engineering. Further, standards are also formulated in many diverse areas like optics and photonics, metal containers, industrial automation and robotics, horology, arms and ammunition for civilian use, and mountaineering equipment, etc. In the present scenario, where the new technologies are being introduced on a day day-to-day basis, BIS has been updating the standards to meet the demands and new challenges with the help of our motivated team of experts. The Production and General Engineering Department works under the guidance of the Production and General Engineering Division Council, PGDC of BIS. The council consists of 26 technical committees who formulate standards relating to various fields of this department. A total number of 2,400 standards have been formulated in this discipline. Let's listen about the working of the council from Dr. D.K. Aswal, chairperson of the PGDC. The standards are developed keeping in view the interest of stakeholders like manufacturers, users, technologists and regulators after taking into account all significant viewpoints through a process of wide consultation. The sectional committee meets regularly and deliberate on review of existing standards and formulation of new standards. The division council and sectional committees continuously carry out assessment based on technological changes, user requirements and anticipated future developments. These become the basis for the formulation of new standards. Now let's talk about some of the interesting standards formulated in different categories. Do you know about the standards specified in the category of mechanical design? A total number of 368 standards have been formulated in this category. Let us take a look at the list of some important standards formulated in this category. Now let's hear from Mr. Narendra Reddy Bisu, scientist BIS, who gives us more details about some of the standards formulated in this category. Human well-being is now recognized as an important economic measure to complement traditional measures of national output. Therefore, BIS has formulated some important standards in this area. The Indian standard IS-ISO 27500, the Human Centered Organization, Rationale and General Principles is intended for executive board members and policy makers 
of all types of organizations whether large or small in the in the private public and non profit sectors this standard explains to executive board members about the values and beliefs that make an organization human centered the significant business and operational benefits that arise and the policies they need to put in place to achieve this it sets out high level human centered principles for executive board members to endorse to optimize performance minimize risks to organizations and individuals maximize well being in their organization and enhance their relationships with the customers the importance of organizational policy to address human centeredness is also emphasized let us talk about another important standard is 16608 which is for safety requirements for personal care robots it aims to make robots safer for working in close proximity with people it is the first internationally recognized safety standard which delineates the requirements and guidelines in order to design the personal robots for safe use typical types of personal care robots which are covered in this standard are mobile servant robots physical assistant robots and person carrier robots in recognition of various nature of hazards with personal care robots usage this standard provides guidance for assurance of safety in the design and construction of the personal care robot the requirements of this standard includes first identification of potential risks and hazards second safety requirement is provision for adequate safety controls third is clear labeling and instructions to make sure that users understand how to operate the robot safely and the fourth safety requirement is to reduce chances of bad decisions for example a person carrier robot should ensure that a passenger is correctly seated before starting to move or ensure that it stops in a location where it is safe for the passenger to get off well that was quite interesting now let's talk about the standardization in core manufacturing and tool sector covering subjects like machine tools forming tools hand tools cutting tools pneumatic and hydraulic tools abrasives and fasteners the forming press is a type of machine tool essential in the performance of a lot of industrial manufacturing processes forming presses are suited for mass production as they can quickly produce the same product over and over again these machines are used to produce structural parts and components that have widespread applications in many industries right from home appliances and utensils to automobiles and even aerospace similarly hand tools and fasteners are commonly used in our daily lives we have been using them from centuries even the caveman used some of them in their ancient form which helped him to survive but now the modern technology has given us some sophisticated hand tools and fasteners which make things easy for us this area has also been well studied by the bis and about 862 standards have been formulated in the field of fasteners pliers nippers wrenches files non spark safety tools cutting tools bolts nuts rivets pins nails washers nails relief grooves counter sinks and counter bolts etc mr kundan giri scientist pgd bis gives us more details on the standards published in this category let me describe some of the standards in the category of tools is 17277 part 1 it specifies technical safety requirements and measures to be adopted by people undertaking the design manufacture and supply of presses which are intended to work on cold metal or material partly of cold metal these presses can be used in same way to work other sheet material like cardboard plastic rubber leather etc this standard applies to presses which can function independently and can also be used as a guide for design of presses which are intended to be integrated in a manufacturing system the requirements in this standard take account of intended use as well as reasonably foreseeable misuse this document presumes access to the press from all directions deals with all significant hazards during the various phases of the life of the machine and specifies the safety measures 
for both the operator as well as exposed persons. Similarly, IS-17253 Part 1 is a Type-C safety standard. It specifies the technical safety requirements for design, construction and supply of stationary milling machines, machining centers and transfer machines which are intended to cut cold metal. Milling machines present a wide range of hazards, protection of operator and the other persons from contact with moving cutting tools is a great importance. This standard covers a list of significant hazards which includes mechanical hazards like unintended contact with a high speed rotating part, high pressure system or rough slippery surfaces where operator could fall, uh, electrical hazards, uh, thermal hazards like open flame or explosion, noise hazard, vibration hazard, radiation hazards and ergonomic hazards among others. The list of significant hazards is followed by the protective measures uh, to prevent or minimize these identified hazards. And uh, finally, the standard talks about uh, procedures for verification of conformity of these protective measures. Uh, the verification of these protective measures can be done through visual inspection, uh, functional test, measurements, calculation and documentation of steps uh, that have been taken for uh, hazard prevention. The Indian standard IS551 is about bonded abrasive products. General requirements which include bonded abrasive products like grinding wheels, uh, segments, sticks, stones, etc. It specifies type number, shape of the bonded abrasive, dimensional symbols to be followed for design and manufacture of wheel, standard profile of the abrasives, specification for material and mechanical properties, designation and finally marking requirement for all the bonded, uh, bonded abrasive products. The Indian standard on non-sparking tools is IS4595 which covers the general requirements for non-sparking tools, which are widely used in the petroleum and natural gas industry, where there is a risk of hazard from combustible atmosphere. These tools are made of non-ferrous alloy, having non-sparking properties and very low magnetic permeability. This standard lays down the chemical composition of material suitable for manufacturing of such tools and the permissible content of impurities in the material. The total content of impurities in such tools shall not exceed 0.30%. The minimum tensile strength and hardness requirement for the tools are also specified. This standard also specifies a sparking test in which a tool made from non-sparking material is subjected to certain impacts in a chamber filled with gasoline having appropriate air fuel mixture. There shall be no combustion when the test is done for three times for five seconds. The test should end with electrically combusting the air fuel mixture to demonstrate the presence of an explosive atmosphere. There is another test for checking the magnetic permeability of the material which shall not exceed 1.02. Another standard is IS1364 part 1 to 6 for hexagonal head bolts, screws and nuts of product grades A and B which fall in the category of fasteners. Fasteners are small parts which are used for binding two similar or dissimilar parts of a machine or any other product. These are manufactured by both MSME and large scale industries. In order to help the MSME and the consumers of fasteners, Bureau of Indian Standard has formulated this standard in six parts. This series of standards cover the requirement and the characteristics like dimension, materials, mechanical properties and designation of hexagonal head bolts, screws and nuts uh, with threads from M1.6 up to and including M64. The product grade A is for threads M1.6 to M24 and nominal length up to and including 10D that is 10 times the diameter or 150 mm whichever is shorter. And the product grade B is for threads over M24 or nominal length over 10D or 150 mm, whichever is shorter. After the tools category, now let us talk about the standards formulated in the category of transmission systems which are required for running any mechanical machine. These systems have a wide range of applications from our domestic requirements to large-scale industries. BIS has formulated about 275 standards on transmission systems covering belts, pulleys, belt drives, gears, 
transmission chains, etc. Let's listen to Mr. Vichitra Veer Singh, scientist BIS, who gives us more details about some of the important standards published in this category. Let me briefly describe some of the important standards formulated by BIS on transmission systems. IS2494 is one of our very important standard on B-belts for industrial purposes. This standard covers all the aspects of B-belt related to manufacturing and testing like materials used and workmanship, dimensions and tolerances and procedure for tensile testing of this product. B-belts conforming to this specifications are recommended for operating at ambient temperature from minus 18 to plus 60 degrees Celsius. This standard also covers recommendations for transmission capacities and selection procedure for the B-belts. B-belts are extensively used in the industries, especially in the automobile sector for power transmission. Another standard IS3681 is for gears. This Indian standard covers the general accuracy for cylindrical gears of involute, modified involute, flank forms comprising of gears, which is straight or inclined teeth for connecting parallel shafts. It includes the tolerance and allowances on tooth thickness, center distance tolerance and backlash. Backlash, a clearance between mating gear teeth is built into speed reducers to let the gears mesh without binding and to provide space for a film of lubricating oil between the teeth. This prevents overheating and tooth damage. Similarly, the standard IS3142 is for pulleys. This standard covers the general requirements both for B grouped pulleys, for 2A, B, C, D and E section, industrial B belts and for SPZ, SPA, SPB and SPC section base belts used for power transmission. Pulleys covered in the standard are of dual duty type and same pulleys shall be used with industrial and batch section B belts except D and E section B belts which are not dual duty type. This standard also specifies the various testing parameters for the pulleys like dimensional testing, static balancing, dynamic balancing and preservative treatments. Now let's talk about the category covering measurements. Weights and measures are the pillars of any trade and commerce. Indian standards formulated on terminology, units, quantities, symbols and preferred numbers fall under the category of basic standards. A total number of 385 standards have been formulated in this category. Here's the list of some of the important standards. The users of these standards are in large numbers like vendors, manufacturers, dealers, purchasers, consumers, laboratories, technical institutions like IITs and also some research and development bodies who are immensely guarded and benefited. Other BIS departments also refer to these standards to formulate standards related to their departments. Now let's listen to Mr. Monak Joshi, scientist BIS, who gives us more details on some standards in this category. With the vision 2030, when the world is moving towards smart cities, the scope for legal metrology has increased. Therefore, some important standards have been developed by BIS in this area. IS 14435 Part 1 and 2 is for gas volumeters. These standards prescribe the general requirements applicable to all types of gas volumeters, including electronic, electronic gas meters. This standard includes the terminology and definitions applicable to the gas volume meters. It also covers the provisions relating to the location of verification and protection marks to detect or prevent any tampering and the provisions relating to the pattern approval for metallurgical control. It also delineates the indicating device's requirements, maximum permissible errors and the initial verification and subsequent verifications of the gas meter by the competent regulatory authorities. Another standard, IS196, Atmospheric Conditions for Testing, finds its application in laboratories. With certain products, the properties are influenced by the atmospheric conditions, and thus it will have an impact on the test results. So if you are testing a product, say in Delhi, and the similar product in Madras, 
test results would be different. So while testing, there needs to be uniformity throughout the country for atmospheric conditions like for temperature, relative humidity or pressure. This standard specifies standard test atmosphere as like for temperature it is 27 degrees Celsius, relative humidity it is 65 percent and whenever the parameters to be measured are not materially affected by the conditions, the measurements can be carried out within a certain range that is temperature uh, to for 15 to 35 degrees Celsius, relative humidity can be taken from 45 to 75 percent and air pressure can be taken from 86 to 106 kilopascal. Similarly, IS 16449 part 1 establishes the safety identification colors and design principles for safety signs and safety markings to be used in workplaces and in public areas for the purpose of accident prevention, fire protection, health hazard information and emergency evacuation. The purpose of safety colors and safety signs is to draw attention rapidly to objects and situations which are affecting the safety and health and to gain rapid understanding of a specific message. The standard SP61 which is formulated by BIS for automatic weather stations, it helps in predicting the nature's behavior for empirical evidence or observation. This standard SP61 is aimed at all the manufacturers and users of the meteorological instruments. This standard prescribes the minimal requirements for sensors used for measuring the wind speed, wind direction, dry bulb temperature, wet bulb temperature, dew point temperature, pressure and rainfall etc. It also delineates the sighting requirements for every sensor in the automatic weather stations which are needed for accurate measurement of the weather observations. It also gives the instrumentation requirements where data transmission and data logging are managed. These requirements are in line with the international recommendations by World Meteorological Organization that is WMO and International Civil Aviation Organization that is ICAO. It clearly mentions the frequency of calibration which refers to the calibration standards as per WMO recommendations. Another standard which I would like to talk about is IS 15635 part 2 for coordinate measuring machines CMM which is used for measuring linear dimensions. A coordinate measuring machine is a device that measures the geometry of the physical object by sensing discrete points on the surface of the object with a probe. This standard specifies the acceptance test for verifying the performance of a coordinate measuring machine that is CMM used for measuring linear dimensions as stated by the manufacturer. It also specifies the re-verification tests that enable the user to periodically re-verify the performance of the CMM. The benefits of this test in these standards are that the measured result has a direct traceability to, to the unit length, the meter, and that it gives information on how the CMM will perform on similar length measurements. This ensures the precision and performance of these machines, which is vital in the design and manufacturing. In the miscellaneous category, the standards formulated are varied and range from metal containers to mountaineering equipment, from arms and ammunition for civilian use to optics and photonics. Let's first talk about metal containers. Safety of packaged beverages and food is important for human consumption. For their safe delivery to the consumer, metal containers are excessively used in their packaging. Metal containers are also used for packaging of other materials like oils, paints, insecticides, deodorants, etc. The main purpose of using metallic cans is to preserve its contents. Ordinary metals can react and begin to corrode due to their reaction with the contents, releasing molecules that would not only destroy the container but also contaminate the content inside, rendering it unsafe for consumption or use. Therefore, the material used for the containers has to be corrosion resistant, light in weight, high in strength for transportability and should offer optimum protection and unsurpassed safety of the product. Similarly, standards have been formulated for the mountaineering equipment too. Until the beginning of the 21st century, mountaineering was an exclusive activity accessible only to a few. Today, despite being a high-risk activity that requires a great level of specialized skills, its popularity among recreational climbers has drastically increased. The goal to reach the top may sometimes be fatal. Just imagine if the ropes and carabiners of the mountaineer were of poor quality or strength, what could have happened? To ensure safety, a proper quality control of the equipment is necessary. 
This equipment is used not only by the enthusiastic climbers but also by the Indian Armed Forces who guard the world's highest borders in snow and highly treacherous terrain. And BIS takes care of it. Now let's have more details about Indian standards on mountaineering equipment from the Chairman of Mountaineering Committee of BIS, Wing Commander Amit Chaudhary. Safety begins and ends with properly taught skills, safe equipment, knowledge and experience. To have safety in climbing, one needs to have properly certified equipment and standardization. A lot of people depend on the work done by BIS in developing the standards that are used by manufacturers and end users to ensure that safety is maintained, whether it is for the recreation climber or for the Indian Army in higher reaches of Himalayas or even the workers who are employed in high risk and high rise construction work. Safety is ensured by standardization work being done so that harnesses, ropes, helmets and other critical gear is of proper quality and provides the safety net that is needed for these people engaged in extreme sport and professions. BIS has also published standards for optical equipment such as microscopes and other instruments for use in educational institutions and testing labs. Formulation of standards for surveying instruments, drawing instruments, materials and components of optical materials have also been standardized which have guaranteed excellent supplies of authentic products to our laboratories. A total number of 275 standards have been published in this category. Here's the list of some of the important standards. Well, that was quite interesting. Now let's listen to Sri Krishna Sudhindran, scientist BIS, who gives us more details about the formulation of standards in this category. I shall talk about some standards which are varied and extend to different segments of application. IS 9396 Part 1 and 2 is for round open top sanitary cans for foods and drinks. Canning is a method of preserving food in which the food contents are processed and sealed in an airtight container. This airtight nature is crucial to keep microorganisms out of the can and keeping its contents sealed inside, which is ensured by double seam construction of the can. A can thus sealed is impervious to contamination by creating two tight continuous folds between the can cylindrical body and the lids. This standard covers the technical requirements for such type of cans. Part 1 of the standard covers the requirements for tin plate for manufacturing of round open top sanitary can. Whereas part two specifies the definition, sizes, manufacturing and testing requirements of cans which are used for the packing of both thermally and non-thermally processed foods and beverages. Another standard, IS14407, formulated for aluminum cans used for packaging of carbonated beverages, prescribes the requirement of seamless two-piece drawn and wall iron impact extruded and ironed aluminum cans up to 500 milliliter capacity. This standard specifies the grade of aluminum used for the manufacturing of the body and the closure of the can. It also prescribes requirements of internal finish so as to ensure that the can behave inertly toward the beverage. It specifies the tests like top load, durability and buckle strength to check strength of the body and ends. Similarly, the standard IS3575 for bitumen drums covers the requirements of steel drums with fixed ends of nominal capacities 160 liters and 200 liters used for packing of bitumen having penetration value 225 and below. It specifies the requirements of steel drums such as its dimensions and material for the body, end and closure. The requirements for construction of the drum such as its side seam welding, corrugation and assembly details for the closure are also prescribed. It also describes the requirements of air pressure test to check for leakage in the drum.
In the field of optics and photonics, the standard IS3099 part 1 and 2 is formulated for microscopes, slips and slides. A microscope slide is a thin flat piece of glass used to hold objects for examination under a microscope. Microscope slides are often used together with a cover slip or cover glass, a smaller and thinner sheet of glass that is placed over the specimen. BIS has developed the standard which covers the requirements of microscope cover slips and microscope slides used for transmitted light microscopy in the visible spectral range of 400 nanometer to 760 nanometer. The standard specifies the dimensions, thickness and surface finish for the slips and slides. It also specifies optical property such as refractive index of the glass along with permissible limits to the number of optical defects. BIS has developed IS8533 which cover the material, design and performance requirements for general purpose carabiners for mountaineering. Carabiners are also known as snap links, beaners or spring hooks. For the purpose of mountaineering, the carabiners need to sustain a load of 22 kN whether they have a locking arrangement or not. Since for a mountaineer, it is important to carry as minimum weight on his body as possible during climbing. IS8533 specifies the carabiners made of aluminium shall have a maximum weight of 82 grams if it is type A or 68 grams if it is type B. For checking the strength of carabiners when loaded in the direction of major axis and minor axis, proof load test is explained in the standard. This test is to be performed once while the keeper is closed and then with the keeper open. Similarly, there are tests for spring. There is crack test and impact strength test to ensure that the carabiners will not fail in real life situations. With fast changing technology, the future looks bright, but it is challenging too. To keep pace with it, BIS is continuously developing new standards to be future ready. To be future ready, BIS has already envisioned the forthcoming scenario and is already on the path to formulate standards and equip itself to meet the upcoming challenges. Some of the emerging areas in which standards are being formulated are smart fuel dispensing units which enable automatic monitoring and control of fuel dispenser transactions and authorizations. Other areas include smart domestic gas meters of greater accuracy, digital twin framework, code of practice for online leakage safety system for pipelines, tipping bucket train gauges, mechanical lottery draw machines, deep proof ball bearing for higher rotation speeds, centralized lubrication system, etc. Production and general engineering department of BIS has also been continuously updating and revising the existing standards as per the changing requirements to meet the demands of all the stakeholders. The BIS e-governance portal Manak Online provides a comprehensive view of its activities including standardization. This portal serves BIS technical committee members and also other users of Indian standards filters to view aspect-wise Indian standards classified based on test methods, product specifications, codes of practices, etc. is also available. The list of Indian standards relevant to various ministries and departments can also be accessed online. Details of published Indian standards and draft standards open for public commenting are also available. Proposals can also be submitted through the portal to make new Indian standards. Details about the technical committees, members, their affiliations through Manak Online are just a click away. With an eye on technological changes and developing standards for times to come, the future looks safe and bright for the country. BIS, an organization in the service of the nation.